Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, you're in for a treat this week because I'm actually going to release two videos together um, on the platform series uh, because they're very, very small, simple topics that were kind of hard to cover in the, the scope of a big, bigger thing. Um, but since they each give me a bit of time to explain some neat little concepts, I'm just going to do two sort of mini parts, but you get them both at the same time. Um, so I'm going to release them both this week um, together. Uh, but they, they only co cover very, very small little things, little little tweaks that are important, um, but um, then they're not really the, the same sort of scope as the things I would usually cover, okay? The first of those things is we're going to cover um, changing the enemy um, to behave uh, a little bit differently. So at the moment, the enemies, they, they walk um, around and they just they, they walk off of edges and then if they bump into a wall, um, they'll just move left and right between that wall forever. Um, it makes it very hard to de design much verticality in the levels because they're, they're just going to walk, like all these guys are just going to walk down this hill, walk off the edge, uh, well, they won't because there's a wall here, but they'll all get sort of piled up in this little pit down here. Um, and sometimes you might want an enemy to, to walk off of edges and stuff like that, but other times you will not. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a flag that we can turn on or off on a per instance basis uh, called Afraid of Heights. And we'll make it so it'll be on by default. And we'll make it so that the, uh, the enemies can't walk off of ledges. Um, so when they approach a ledge, uh, they'll just turn around and head back in the other direction. And it'll be something you can turn on or off and manipulate with triggers and stuff like that as well. Um, just to make your enemies a little bit easier to work with and um, a bit more flexible and versatile. I know other people have also wanted to explore how to make the enemies a bit more interesting um, in terms of because these guys don't fight back or do anything like that. So that might be something we cover in another part in the near future as well. Uh, but today we're just going to cover some sort of simple movement stuff for these guys and make them just a little bit more interesting. First of all, let's just take a look at our enemy object. So I'm going to double click on enemy here. Um, it's got a whole bunch of stuff open, but all I really want open initially is this variable definitions window, okay? Um, or just the create event if you're using 1.x because you won't you won't have this window. Um, so this is this window is cool because it lets us add things that we can manipulate in the room editor, and this is going to be one of those things. I'm going to add um, a boolean, and I'm going to call it. A Afraid of heights. Okay, and this boolean, uh, boolean means a variable that's either true or false, or, or one or zero, as it's actually represented in Game Maker. But that comes down to whether or not it is true or false. And obviously, if we tick that, it's true. If we don't, it's false. If you're not using the very, very latest version of Game Maker Studio 2, uh, and that is ID version 2.1.4.2, 288 at the time of making this video. Uh, make sure when you add this boolean, you tick and untick it um, because there's a weird bug in the version just before this, where if you add a boolean and you don't, uh, you don't actually change this or like uh, tick it or untick it, um, Game Maker actually becomes unstable when you when you run the game um, and, and it won't work. Um, so. Make sure if you're not on the very, very latest version, or just do anyway to be safe, when you add this boolean, just tick and untick this, okay? Um, actually, just tick it, full stop, because we're going to have it be true anyway. <laughs> okay, the next thing I'm going to do is add another boolean in here. Um, uh, so just change the type to boolean. Again, make sure you click untick, um, because we're going to leave this one as false. Even though it starts as false, just make sure you click it off, on and off once if you're not on the very latest version of Game Maker. Um, and this boolean is just going to be called grounded. Okay, uh, you could argue that you know um, the variables that we're never necessarily going to set in the room editor. You should probably add those in like the create event rather than this variable definition window. But um, since we're here already and we're, we're just being quick, uh, it really doesn't make too much of a difference. It's just if you add lots of those things in here, um, you can end up with a point. If you're just using this to initialize variables, you can end up with a point where this gets really huge and unwieldy and, and, and hard to deal with and hard to find what you're looking for. So that that's the distinction I found to make. Um, that's something I've kind of learned um, a Beck's best practice recently of just which variables you should define in the create event and which you should define in the variable definitions window. Trying to find the ones in the variable definitions window that you want to expose to yourself in the room editor and things that you might want to change. Um, on a per instance basis, um, stuff that's like you're just initializing for the sake of that object, like flash and uh, VSP and uh, a few other things. Um, 
you, you can just you can just put those in the create event and it folds them out of the way a little bit that's my preferred way of doing it you can obviously do it however you want if you're on 1.x obviously you've got no choice you just have to do them on the create event <laughs> okay so if you're on 1.x uh, just type afraid of heights equals true in your create event and grounded equals false in your create event okay Cool. So uh, now that we've got those couple of things done, let's open the events window back up and go to uh, the step event. Right at the bottom here where we handle the animation for the player, um, this gives us a handy place where we can also check whether or not we're on the ground, um, which isn't something we actually do in the enemy because it doesn't have any kind of jumping system or anything like that. So. Um, here where we have if not place me in x, y plus 1 or wall, that's checking that there is not a wall underneath us, right? And since we're doing that here, um, I can write grounded equal false if that is true, okay? And in the opposite case, grounded equals true, okay? Um, simple as that, that just means we've put that into a variable so that we don't have to call this every time because calling collision checks is expensive. Um, whereas checking a variable is way less expensive. So just plunk that into a variable, and then we don't have to repeat this check uh, multiple times in one frame. So once we've got that, let's scroll up to the top here. I'm going to write a new little section um, just above our collision section, because above our collision section is where we work out any movement calculations or changes typically, right? Um, for the enemy, it's always been really simple. It's just been increasing our gravity and our horizontal speed is flipped when we collide. Uh, but we're going to add a new little thing now, which is don't walk off edges. And I'm going to check three things, and one of them will actually be a collision check, but at least it saves us doing two in one if statement. Uh, if grounded um, and afraid, oops, if I can type afraid of heights, and no place meeting x plus hsp y plus 1 o wall. I've written that in a really weird inconsistent way. Let's just sort of close that. <laughs> close those spaces up. There we go. And add the second bracket on the end there. Have I spelled that wrong? It's still... Oh, there we go, it's turned blue. So when I... I'm not sure I've covered this before, but when I write in a variable name as a reminder either way, when I write a variable name inside a pair of brackets like that, and I'm just saying if that variable, um, what I'm asking is if that is true, okay? So if it's 1. Um, if it's 1, it'll come back true, and if it's 0, it'll come back false, okay? Um, or if it's true, it'll come back true, and if it's false, it'll come back first, okay? Um, so I'm saying if grounded is true, uh, it's exactly the same as if I wrote this, by the way. Um, if grounded equal equal true uh, by just putting it in the brackets by itself. So if grounded is true and afraid of heights is also true, so if we're on the ground, uh, we're afraid of heights and where we're about to move, x plus hsp, uh, one pixel below that if there's a wall there, um, or if there's not a wall there, sorry, because the exclamation mark. So that means we're about to walk off of the ledge. So all we need to do then is do, because we haven't actually moved yet, we're just about to move off of the ledge, we can just say HSP equals minus HSP, which will just flip the direction of travel. Okay, super simple stuff. Um, and then that, that is basically all there is to it. So if I just come into uh, this room now, we've got to see these dudes up here. What they should do now when we run the game is, um, and we'll move this guy as well, move him up to there just so we can see it right away. Um, the, I think this guy might fall down to here because he'll fall a bit beforehand because it's only going to check it if he was grounded at the start of the frame. So otherwise he would like wobble around in the air when he was falling like left and right constantly. Um, so he'll probably fall to like somewhere around here, but he'll end up staying on that platform. We can see this is working, like he is there uh, waddling back and forth, but he is not uh, moving to the next. Uh, he's, he's not falling off of that edge, and the same is true here, like he fell and kind of landed there because he had some horizontal movement to begin with uh, and, and ended up there. Um, and we can change this on a per instance level now. So if I go to this guy and, and go to his variables, I could scroll down to, first of all, just his HSP. If we just um, set to edit that and set that to minus walk speed, that'll start him off walking to the left. 
and we can go do Afraid of Heights and toggle that to off. And now what we should see happen is he behaves uh, much like a regular uh, or other dudes did previously. And he will walk to the left and he will continue falling until like, you know, he can't go anywhere else, right? So we can toggle that on a per instance basis. Not only can we do that, but we can also, um, it would be very easy now for us to create certain triggers that allow these to move in particular ways. We could create an object that if an enemy collides with them, we turn Afraid of Heights on very, very easily. Um, just so like similar to our level end trigger that just sort of collides with the player and uh, does with O player and does this stuff. We could do a trigger that does with O enemy um, and says uh, Afraid of Heights equal true and put that somewhere. I'm not going to do all this now because there's a lot of stuff. I'm just explaining the concept. But like you could put that say like here and then like this guy would like fall, walk down to here, and then sort of waddle back and forth. And it allows you to create some sort of a, a little bit more advanced sort of scripted behavior for how these guys move around, or allows you to start building on that. So that's all for this first mini part. I am actually going to split. You're, you're going to get both of these uh, together because they're, they're very short, simple topics to cover. But um, thank you very much for watching this short part, and I'll catch you guys next time. Yes, that's right. My idea of a short and simple video equates to about 15 minutes. Go figure. Anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and I'd also like to thank all of my Patreon supporters who make this work possible. A huge thank you in no particular order, but in particular to Patrick Guffey, TJ, Bowser the Dog, Zinan May, Owen Morgan, Robert Churches, Crispy, Seanathan, Jason McMillan, Michael Ward, Stephen Hagen, Nick Slabish, Fisk McTaggart, Matt Coat, Harold Guidry, Reuben Darlin, Mark Day, James Grimley, Gummy Tainment, Chris Maher, Dan, Doan Techben, Lewis R. Pereira, and Mark Lentz. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.